Hey, my name is Spencer, and today I'm going to talk about DNS records. I'm going to talk about what they are, what are some of the common ones that you'll see, and also how to configure them for Rackspace Cloud Office. So let's get started. So what is DNS and why would you need it? Well, let's say you bought a brand new domain. You may want to have multiple services associated with it. You may want to put email with one provider, but your website with another, for example. The way the internet knows who is providing which service for your domain is by utilizing the Domain Name System, or DNS. Your domain will use DNS records to not only tell the internet who is handling the service they requested, but also to customize certain aspects of your domain. And because a domain can have so many different types of records, the DNS system makes it easy so you don't have to memorize all those records. You simply need to know the domain name. A good real-world example is thinking about DNS like an address book on a mobile device. To reach out to someone, you just need to know their name to get their info. For each contact, you can have multiple ways to get a hold of them. Their home, work, cell phone, email, address, and even see things like the company they work for, job title, and notes. Let's say I want to call my friend Mike. I would open up my address book and do a search for Mike. I then open his contact information and select the best way to call him. DNS would work the same way. Now let's say I wanted to email Mike on his domain. When I send out a message from my computer, the computer will reach out to the DNS server to find out who his email provider is and get my message to his mailbox. So that's DNS in a nutshell. So let's take a look at some of the most common records that you'll come across and also how to set them up in the Cloud Office control panel. So the first thing you're going to want to do is navigate in the control panel to your DNS settings. So here I am in the control panel. I'm going to scroll down to the domain section and I'm going to click on DNS settings. That is going to give me a list of all the domains and I'm going to find the domain that I want to make the change for and I'm going to click on DNS records over here on the right. This is going to show me all the records for the domain that are currently set up. So mail exchange or MX records are one of the most important records when it comes to DNS if you're talking about email. That record is what tells the internet where to route email for your domain. So let's take a look here at the DNS settings page. If I scroll down, the MX records are going to be down here at the bottom. Now Cloud Office has two MX records. We have MX1 dot email srvr.com with a priority or a preference of 10 and mx2 dot email srvr.com with a priority or a preference of 20. You may have another DNS host and these records are going to be identical to what needs to be put in on their control panel. They just may have this laid out a little bit different. If you have hosted exchange or Rackspace email these two MX records are going to be your MX records. If you have Office 365 with Rackspace, your MX record is going to look a little bit different. And we'll provide you with the documentation on how to find that record if your email is hosted on an Office 365 server. Once you have the MX record set, you can go ahead and hit Save. So there are many reasons why you'd use a CNAME record, but the most common that we use for email is the auto discover record. So you can see here on my DNS settings, I've got a record here that's a auto discover CNAME, and it points to autodiscover.emailsrvr.com. Now we as a DNS provider, automatically add your domain to your records. So the full record is autodiscover.yourdomain. If you have DNS hosting with another provider, you'll need to look at your other records to determine whether they automatically add your domain or if you're going to have to type that into the host field. So what does the autodiscover record actually do? Well, this is what allows Outlook or Mac Mail or your mobile devices to find your server settings automatically. There's also several features of Exchange that require this record to be in place in order for them to function. One thing to note about AutoDiscover is that if you're utilizing Outlook 2016 or newer and you also have an Exchange mailbox, the AutoDiscover record must be in place in order for that Exchange box to be set up. 
If you have any further questions about the auto discover record, we have further documentation linked in the description of this video. TXT records or text records are typically used for domain verification purposes. So if you start services with Office 365, for example, they're going to provide you with a text record to put on your DNS records to prove that you own that domain before you can start using their services. Now with Rackspace email or hosted exchange, we don't require any TXT records be added to your DNS. However, we do recommend one record be added to your DNS, and let's take a look at that. So here I am in the DNS settings, and you can see that I have a TXT record here. This is what we call an SPF record, or a Sender Policy Framework. What this does is this helps cut down on spoofing for the domain. So our record is V equals SPF1 space include colon email srvr.com space tilde all. So what this does is when you send an email out and it's received by another server, they check your DNS and they see who can send for your domain. This is saying that all emails should come from email srvr.com. If it comes from anywhere else, you can probably treat it as spam and it will end up in the spam folder. So if you have another provider that you use for bulk sending purposes, you'll also want to add them inside of this SPF record. Keep in mind you can only have one SPF record, so you'll need to combine them. So let's say I use example.com as my bulk sender. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to type in include colon example.com and do a space. And so now all emails from example.com and email srvr.com from my domain are now going to be considered legitimate. Now if you wanted to take this to another level, you would want to look into DKIM and DMARC records. Now those we have additional videos for you to check out so that you know how to set those up. An A record is typically used for website purposes. So here I am in the DNS records, and you can see that my first section here shows the A records. Now over here on the right, you'll see what's called an IP address. If you're not familiar with that, that is the server address on the internet for your website. So you'll be provided this by whoever your web host is. So if I were to take this IP address, copy it and put it in a new tab and hit enter, you will see that it will take me to the website for this domain. Now because this is just a domain used for email purposes, that IP address is just the Rackspace login page. Now if I were to actually type in that domain, emailhelpteam.com, you will see that it actually goes to the exact same page. Something to keep in mind about A records is that you can only point them to IP addresses. So if your website developer has provided you with anything other than an IP address, you're gonna to wanna to consider setting it up as a C name record rather than an A record. Additionally, A records are not required for email services, so if you are only using your domain for email, you can leave the A records at the default, which point to our webmail site. NS records, or name server records, are records that tell the internet who is in charge of your DNS records. So when you purchase the domain from a registrar, that registration typically comes with DNS hosting. However, you can move DNS hosting wherever you would like. So let's say that you purchased your domain over with Rackspace and you wanted to move DNS hosting to another provider. Here inside of the Rackspace control panel, you would come over here to use custom name servers and your new DNS host would provide you with their name server records that need to be put in. Now on the other side, let's say you purchased that domain somewhere else and you wanted to move DNS hosting over to Rackspace. We would need to put in the name server records 
over with your current registrar to point to rack space so that these records are now the records that are in charge for your domain. We have five different records here at Cloud Office. The first one is dns1.name-services.com. The next one is dns2, and then dns3, dns4, and dns5, as you can see here on the screen. So once you put all of those records in with the current registrar, now your DNS is pointing over to Rackspace. So let's talk about what happens after you make a change to your DNS records. There's this thing called propagation, and that is the time period that it's going to take for all the servers around the globe to see that change that you made. Now you'll often hear that it can take up to 24, even 48 hours for your changes to take effect. However, it does depend on your DNS host. It also depends on if you're replacing a record, deleting a record, adding a brand new record. And so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go check out a public propagation checker site. For example, we use whatsmydns.net. So let's take a look. If I come over here and I type in my domain, emailhelpteam.com, and I use this dropdown and I choose MX, I'm going to pull this random set of servers around the globe to see if my MX records have propagated yet. So I click search, and you can see that my record has propagated. Now, if I wanted to check something else like my name servers, I can do that. Or if I wanted to check a C name, the one thing you need to keep in mind with this is you must put in the entire C name record. So I'm going to type in autodiscover.mydomain, and I'll see that my autodiscover record has propagated. So again, this is just one of the sites that we typically like to use, but you can use any public propagation checker. So it's as easy as that. If you have any further questions, you can check out our other email help videos, or you can visit emailhelp.rackspace.com. And as always, at the top of your control panel, there's a phone number to reach us, as well as a chat feature. We're here 24-7, 365. Until next time, have a great rest of your day.